And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the top five picks of the week here on Circle Debates. Of course, the top five for this pick of the week is our top five baby face turns. Yeah, I don't have a thumbnail as of yet, but I'm working on it. But yes, it's our top five baby face turns. Which was the top five pro wrestlers that got us like, oh my God, it's the greatest baby, baby face turn of all from a heel to a baby face. So that's what we're here giving our top five. And it's a difficult list. I, I ain't gonna lie. It, well, it's an extremely difficult list for me. I don't know how for Money Mike and for Matt. But yes, we are here today to give you guys that top five. So I think, or are we gonna, I think we're just gonna be a new one, right? No more spin the wheel of names. Are we gonna do rock, paper, scissors, three way, Matt? What happened with, with the wheel? Yeah, let's do the wheel. Only when it's two of us, we do the, you know, <laughs> rock, okay. paper. All right. Looks like we'll have to do the wheel then. So let's, it is decided. Courtesy, uh, courtesy of Clark Street. Let's see. Shout out to Clark Street, by the way. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Because they now call me the Professor you know X what? of podcasting. I'm jealous that Devin was able to go to the, the, the first dance. That was so awesome. Like, man, you got to see CM Punk come out. That pop, though. Oh, yeah. I can only imagine. I can only imagine, too. Oh, I, eesh, Jesus, I'm pretty sure. Let's see. Okay, I'm adding everybody's names here very quickly. Let's see. And while Ivan does that, I, I have to mention, if you haven't gotten your Circle of Debate mug, what are you waiting for? Everything tastes better when you include uh, Circle of Debate. That is right. You heard it right, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you click on our link tree below and click on the merchandise store. Purchase your own, very own Circle of Debate mug. Could be anything from alcohol, non-alcoholic, coffee, tea, whatever you like to put yeah. on that. Delicious. You can put it in your microwave, uh, you know, heat up the coffee in the morning. Yeah, yeah everything. Don't drink Definitely. coffee. And, and no, <laughs> unless it's in your circle of debate mug. That is right, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it here all the time and first. All right, let's go to the wheel now. Let's see who goes first. Oh, righty. Spin that, that wheel. Hey, I know that name. Who are you? <laughs> who, who are you? Where's the trigger? <laughs> All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Um, and honestly, I did not take long thinking about this list because I definitely enjoy a lot of uh, character changes and more importantly, why they change into the characters that they become. Um, number five is Kurt Angle. Now, my first nickname here in Circle Debate was the Great American Hero, and he's the reason why. Because... When he turned from heel to babyface during the invasion, right after Stone Cold betrayed uh, Team WWF, he came out, and I believe it was in Pittsburgh, his hometown, and, man, the pop that he got, and, and honestly, the look of just, you screwed me over, you SOB. I'm coming to, I'm coming to get you. <laughs> um, you know, Kurt Angle came out with that face, man. Like he meant business. So he did, he abandoned that, uh, dorky, geeky cowboy hat wearing little guitar thing. Yippee ki -yay. Yeah. Ooh. He left that. And this guy was coming for Austin. Uh, so that right there, just, uh, one of my top baby face turns for sure. Uh, which led to that awesome SummerSlam match that I, I always enjoy. Um, number four, CM Punk. Uh, you know, it, it's it's interesting because it was never revealed or mentioned really that CM Punk had left the Nexus or the new Nexus. It, it was just, you know, he delivered the pipe bomb and no more mention of the Nexus ever again. Um, so, you know, I, it, it just, 
that money in the bank pay-per-view 2011 uh the pop that he received and even michael cole said oh yeah these people here like him but you know everywhere else he's a villain and he's this and that and he he tried to make him seem like a heel but no uh i'm sorry michael cole cm punk had turned face right there and then it happened in chicago uh that, that i always enjoy watching that number three is the rock um I believe it was 19, May of 1999, right after Backlash. Mm. And um, he was, you know, corporate champion and all that. He had lost twice in a row to Austin. And really, the crowd was so behind him. You know, even as a heel, there was no other choice but to make him face. And he turned on the, corp- the corporation uh, and, you know, turned on Shane McMahon and uh, the rest, is, as they say, is history. It needed to happen because you can only hold people as a heel sometimes for so long. And people just, they want to love them. And you, what do you do? You let them loose and you let people just gravitate towards them. And, and it happened with The Rock. So definitely The Rock deserved uh, that change. And we all know what happened. So Good job on that. Good call, I would say. Mm. Number two, Becky Lynch. Uh, they tried to turn her heel. And she, I remember when she was just kind of like a bland baby face, just bland character. And they turned her heel and, on Charlotte. And what happened? She got hit in the face by Nia Jax. Uh, she was supposed to face Rhonda and uh yeah so things changed she became probably the most over female in recent history and man you know uh the it all started there it all started with that forced face turn they, they wanted to hear heal but the people and, and those are the best turns those are the best ones the ones that the people demand and they say to WWE, you know what? We want this person to be a face, and we want it naturally uh, because we want it, not because Vinnie Mac wants it. So those are the best ones. That's right. And my number one special place in my heart, always, always, no, until the end of time. It was so short-lived, uh, but, man, I get chills each time I watch that video. Uh, is when Stone Cold, the old Stone Cold, uh, came to stun the Alliance uh, for as short as it was, that face turn. Man, we had seen Stone Cold uh, just at a bar drinking. Uh, He was at his low of lows. And you know what? That speech by Classy Freddy Blassie inspired him, brought out the old Stone Cold, or so we thought at the time, and that music hit, and all hell broke loose. He saved Team WWF, and honestly, the story could have ended there for me, and I would have been a okay with it, but it didn't. So, but favorite face turn, that one for sure. Uh, two honorable mentions. First being probably the most mishandled one on this list, but I enjoyed it while it lasted. And it was Damien Sandow. Or oh, Ms. yes. I, Ms. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. Hell I, yeah. I, I, I love you for that. I that love was good. You. You, it was, yes, it was good. I, I, I was there at WrestleMania 31 when he finally turned on The Miz. And he eliminated <laughs> him from the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Fuck yeah. It was, fuck yeah. It was awesome. You know? Um, <laughs> but again, I mishandled. <laughs> yeah. So, de- definitely, I had to give Damien Sandow a, a, a shout out here. Uh, Aaron Stevens, right now in NWA. So, uh, so there, there you so go with he's that. The star of Tropical Pirates. It's one of the few movies where you can't look the star in the eye. And also, he is an executive producer for Championship Wrestling from Hollywood as well. <laughs> the more you know. Yes, absolutely. Karate. <laughs> That's right. And my second honorable mention. Uh, Hulk Hogan, WrestleMania 18. <coughs> Again, one of those forced 
turns. The crowd was with him. Sky Dome uh, in Toronto, right? The Rock was the face here, but uh 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 uh, no way, Jose. Um, they wanted Hogan to be the face, and that's exactly what happened. And, and credit to The Rock and Hogan for doing that for the audience, for the event itself, uh, to make it such a legendary match. Um, so yeah, that was my list. There you go. That was some fucking deep list. You, you already burned the shit out of me and Matt, honestly. I'm, I'm, I need the old stone call. <laughs> I remember that. I remember that. I, oh, man. It's good shit. It's fucking good shit. Is he look mad? <laughs> <sighs> that is good shit. All right. Let's see who, who who's the next in line. And, of course, best for last, baby. Best for last. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. That was a good fucking list, Mike. I forgot about a fucking... Aaron Stevens. That was I forgot about that. Mongrovian karate. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Matt Callis. I like how mine are, are right next to each other. I guess since they asked for Matt Callis, that I have to transform into him. Metamorphosize, <laughs> if you will. Yeah, definitely. Like, especially since you picked Matt Callis, not MGC. So for my list, of course, <laughs> you know, I got to give it up to the Stamford Stooges out there. But my list, I'm I'm gonna go, you know, a little bit of a, a little bit of a different angle right here. So I'm gonna go with uh, number five will be Kurt Angle when he turned on the Alliance at Survivor Series. Mm. That was kind of like, a, that was kind of a fun one, you know. But a lot of, some people saw it coming, some people weren't so sure, you know. Good. So, but I, I, when I saw him turn on Stone Cold, I was like, yes! I was still a stooge at the time. I was still a big Stamford stooge at the time, and I really believed that the WWF would disappear off the face of the earth if the Alliance won. So when Kurt Angle turned on Stone Cold, it's like, yes. All right, Team WWF's going to win. Jericho and The Rock, you're going to make it through this one. So that was my number five. My number four, this is also related, again, to the Invasion Angle. I, I actually should have made this higher, but, you know, maybe I won't for now because I remember what my other ones were. Number four is Rob Van Dam after the Invasion Angle. Because he was really, he was just straight up a baby, like he was really beloved by the crowd before the the end of the invasion angle. Because he was still in the company even after, you know, they didn't do like a fake firing of him. He was just too beloved, too cool. So they had to keep him on. And now that there was no more WCW and ECW, like Rob Van Dam's now like has the freedom to climb as a baby face. And it was just so cool seeing everybody just cheer for him with reckless abandon. So that's that's my number four. <laughs> number, uh, I think I'm gonna make this. Yeah, I'll make this. I'll I'll make this my number three. I got a TNA one coming for you guys. A little bit, a little bit obscure for you. A little bit obscure for you. Disciples of the New Church. Oh Father, shit! Father James Mitchell. With the disciples of the new church, I'm talking, I'm talking Tempest, Flash, and Malice, and there were all heels in this stable early TNA, and this is during freaking Vince Russo's S Sports Entertainment Extreme, SEX Invasion, and there were all the the disciples of the new church. They were they were all heels. They were like supernatural, like hell demons. You know, they're evil, but and their chant was evil. But the cool thing was, is that they, were they started feuding with SEX and everybody was cheering for them. Because SEX, SEX was like corruption and Vince Russo and Trash TV. And Disciples of the New Church were like these evil dudes that were just like, and, and the whole audience was yelling, chanting, evil, evil, evil. And their song, their song sounds so cool. Like the catacombs and feeling no Oh, get on your feet. Oh, like, 
Yeah, disciples of the <laughs> church. I, I gotta tell you, Tony Khan, you need to call Father James Mitchell should have been involved in the Dark Order. Like he kind of fits he fits with them so perfectly, you know, like a like 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 pasta sauce and pasta. I don't know, man. Somebody here might be showing up pretty soon. You know, that you never know. They might be showing <laughs> up pretty soon. Might take uh, over that. We could get both of them. Let's get both. Let's let's have the whole cult, the new cult. So I got a I got another one. So and another one. And another and another one. And another one. So I got Naito when Los Angeles Bernabas started feuding with the Bullet Club, you know, because originally, originally Naito was a, uh, originally Naito was mainly they were kind of like antagonist villains for a little bit, you know, with with uh, Taiguchi Japan and Chaos. They were kind of like, but then when they started feuding with Bullet Club, you know, it's like evil against evil more or less. But it's like, Why are you, you know. There's always that lesser of two evils type thing going on. So Los Angeles and Bullet Club was a pretty cool one overall. All right. Let's see. You know, I'll, I'll leave it up to you guys to, to pick this one. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but you guys want me to go into the – you want me to do something from the past or something from the future? Wait, for your number one or for your number two? My number one. So your number two was Nido, right? You know, my number two was Naito, so... And this was the time when, after he left CMML, right? Yeah, when he came back, when Los Inglor Navas de Japón was already active. and they were, they were mainly villains, but when they started feuding with Bullet Club, you know, they became they became baby faces. But let me let you guys... I'll let you guys decide on this one. Do you guys want to go the past or the future? <laughs> you know what? I'm curious about the future. You want that's, to, you that's, want that's to... what I'm curious about. Shut Ivan, you want you the want the future. You want the future. Too? Bam, 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 bam. That's a good song. Sadly, I'm thinking of that one rapper. I like that one rapper who came out rapping with that. He's cool. We should we should get him on one of these days. He, oh, he yeah. might be cool. That that the wrestling rapper. Yes. But all right, you guys ready for this number one? Oh, I got my. <laughs> the actual drum kit behind me. All right, my number one, Jay White on Impact. There's my future one because he's he's pretty much a babyface over there. Bull Club, Bull Club are good guys in Impact. Everybody's cheering for everybody's cheering for Chris Bay. Everybody's cheering for Jay White and Kenny Omega, Don Callis, and the Good Brothers are obviously the heels over there. So Jay White is seen as a good guy over there. And it's weird because it's one of those, this, this, once again, I'm talking about we're taking it back to the territories because just like the territory days, you could be a heel in one place and a baby face in another. That's how it was in the territories. People And people would know you'd be injured in one place and you'd be completely well in another. That's the great beauty of the territories. And so this is, this is a little, we're getting a little slice of that now. Jay White being a heel in New Japan and Jay White being a baby face of impact. You know, who knows? Worlds could collide, but uh, we're getting a little Worlds bit. Worlds could collide! Well, this is what <laughs> happens when worlds collide. Da -da 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 -da. We're rocking out all, all week here. I know. Rock it out because, you know, it's uh, it's the six, it's the 70s and 60s weeks, man. You know, that's what it is. It's the, the new metal days back in the 1990s and 2000s for us. Yeah, big time. So, all right. So, my honorable, my first, my second honorable mention. I mean, my first honorable mention. Uh, Triple H, when he came back, when Chris Jericho was undisputed champion. Yes, I love that. Good call. Good, good yeah, that's a good one. Shit. Good shit. I, I wasn't, I didn't think I'd cheer for, for Triple H, but they did. Like I guess the both the writers, the, the bookers, they did a really good job. And you of, too. Yeah, of getting us to like Triple it's H. It's a beautiful day. Yeah. <laughs> I, I watched that video, the 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 desire videos. Oh my god. Those are my those are that's... great. Yes. Oh. That, that it made actually succeeded in me liking Kid Rock. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Call me cocky. And I say, what? It ain't bragging when you do it, when you back it up. And woo! Whenever we're going to karaoke, man, we need to do this, man, because our new official sponsor is Kathy Brass Monkey. Want to go over there? Karaoke bar sponsor of Circle of Debate. I gotta, I gotta say that that song, all the, I, I think it was a fan one, the one they did for Sting, because I watched that one. It was a, I watched the fan made Sting Desire one, and then you know, I uh, Creed was the other big one. My God. Yeah, my sacrifice. My sacrifice. My sacrifice. I imagine my, my when I was in elementary school, I would daydream about them making one for me if they made wow. like yeah. I'm not gonna um, lie, I use sacrifice as a workout music. Yeah. Matt, I may be able to make that happen. About my, my entire career. Just at the musical beginning. career. Hello, my friend, we meet again. And it's like me. I'm so tempted to I'm make that happen. Eight. I'm like, um, <laughs> Uh, I, I, no, I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie. I, I, I that could be my that could be my birthday present. You know, sure. wait, wait that one down the line. That'll be pretty solid. And they put it on circle got, debate. <laughs> on the you do it, social media though have, can be on YouTube. Have sorry. all like the W. Just throw in some WWE clips in there with it, just for the <laughs> some random, <laughs> yeah. random clips. That would be so awesome. Just have Brock Lesnar like. F fiving people or something Young like that. Um, making me yeah, choke you with my own beer, man. <laughs> I'm gonna choke you out. It's like you won't even be awake. It's like oh you're not God, even feeling hurt. it. <laughs> like you won't even feel it. All right. All right. So as much as we're laughing, uh well, not really a downer. This is this for the love, the memory. Uh the entire dark order is my number one honorable mention. Wow. Yeah, yeah. When they when they all turn they all turn babyface on the passing of Brody Brody Lee, I I think it was kind of like you know, I'm well I I won't take any but because I I Mike out I, I mean I don't know if you've mentioned if you're gonna mention this Roman Reigns when he kind of like came out with the you know leukemia yeah when he told everyone he had leukemia, I guess that's kind of like you know when. When you kind of don't have a choice because of like the suffering and the human element to it all, you know, kind of the shoot and kayfabe world kind of collide and just give you, you know, a taste of of getting to know these people as people. So that's that's kind of that's kind of what that is right there. But but overall, the the realness is is beautiful in the ways. So I like that and great yeah. great way how to end how to put it and uh, yeah yeah. Um, Monzu sauce. I mean, yeah, that that was an emotional day because seeing, I don't lie, I did cry because the whole tribute for it was great. I liked it. I did tear up when, you know, John Silver when he won the match. You could tell when he was crying. I, I did, I did tear up because it was like it was heartfelt emotion for him. He was wearing the Brody Lee jacket uh, for the entrance, so it was a really emotional moment for him. Uh, and to see him getting the pin, getting the win. Oh yeah, it was really heartbreaking, and uh, I know that it, it will mean a lot for him, you know. And Co- Bernie Lee, we love you, man. You, you, good heart and soul, man. Too soon, but all right. My shit was hard, man. It's I'm going to the past to I I can't really say no present, more to the past because I enjoyed these moments. And if I go back and look at it again, it's like, I like it. So, my number five will be Roddy Roddy Pipers. Why? Because after WrestleMania 2, after Mr. T, he took off for a minute. He came back. Because remind you that if you go back and look at Mania 1 and 2 and go back to look at YouTube before that, those events, People were cheering for him already because he was your original fucking Stone Cold Steve Austin as in not giving a shit. Like, he was your your, your biggest hater, but people started ended up loving him because of the charisma and the passion that he has for the mic. And then after that, like, he had the balls to get in the ring with Mr. T, you know? And that wasn't really planned correctly, but he still did. He didn't give a shit. 
But after that, he got ovation. He got, oh my God, I love it. And like, yeah, hell yeah. And I, and that character made me fall in love with Piper for me to cheer him for him too. And I think a lot of people that want to talk about Mike's skills better go study that video right there of Piper's promos because rest in peace, Piper. But man, Piper is a man. And who, he, it's funny because he didn't want to be a baby face, but Vince is like, hey, hey, pal, this is really good shit. Might as well just become a face. Ah, might as well. And there you go. You become a face. Man, I love it. I love it. Number four, WrestleMania 7, Macho Man Randy Savage reunites with Miss Elizabeth. I like that fucking, that one right there. Uh, just the reuniting of Savage. We, you know, Savage became a face after WrestleMania 3, then he became a, a heel for four, uh, heading the following for five against Hogan. And then when WrestleMania 7 happened, he became a face again. With That was a love story right there. Like, And it was cool. Good to see Savage um, back being as a baby face. But credential starts from after three because his match with Ricky Steamboat got it. was the match of the year that of that era. And so Macho Man is my number four. My number three, for the, uh, I would have to say, shit, this is going to be a tough one. I would have to say, D-Generation X. When D-Generation X became face. I Which think- time? It was the first time they became face. Okay. They were heels for quite some time. When even the first time they joined, uh, when the New Age, and then when they brought in X Pac first, Sean Wallman, then they brought up the New Age. They were the horrible heel, like the baddest heels of all time. Yeah. When I think the feud will happen with Domination is when they started to turn face during that era. They started turning face. So I enjoyed that one. I could say I enjoyed it. Um, number two, then since Matt brought up TNA reference, I'll bring up one TNA impact reference that I enjoyed as a face. Like, I people started loving it, and that is delete, 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 delete. As Matt Hardy, remember when Matt Hardy, this big money Matt that he has AEW had an impact, an impact, but then when he found that persona, when he he went crazy, lost his mind, losing to, to, to Jeff. And then he became the sadistic, you know, broken Matt Hardy. Then later on in Impact, he started becoming a face because and then that's when he started calling Jeff Brother Nero. Brother Nero! Yes! Yes! And then from there, when they became a face, going around all over the territories, winning every gold, every tag team belt as a face, I enjoyed it. Their feud with the K was one of the greatest. So I enjoyed that. Broken Matt Hardy heel to a face that I didn't expect him to turn. You know, like he saved Jeff Hardy. I think it was an event. Uh, correct if I'm wrong. Comment below because I always it's hard to remember this. So that is for sure. Um, I did enjoy that one. Uh, my number one would be, you know, I'll, my number one. Has to be the Stone Cold one, but not the one for the Alliance one. I will have to go with the first time that he turned face. After yeah. WrestleMania 13 will be the first one. That after that, he made a name for himself and took it all the way. And I enjoyed that one. Uh, for him going to WrestleMania 14 as a face, when, and then just, it wasn't a red heart. He would not be a face. So got to give kudos to Brett the Hitman Hart for that. Uh, so Stone Cold the first time when he became face, not the second time. So I enjoyed that. Two honorable mentions. The first one would be John Cena. Oh, okay. 2003? Yeah. Be at, you know, before the Survivor Series one. Mm -hmm. If you remember that one, because we were starting to see people like liking Cena, and then he, he started – that's what Vince had to pull the plug. Like, no more heel. I need you to face. People started liking you. You yep. became the professional wrestling of Eminem. And Eminem was hot during that era. So, 
what are the best way to you know turn the you know turn the knob to Cena as a face? And because people are starting to like him, like, oh yeah, this is a this is a white boy with an attitude. I love it. So they ended up turning him as a face. So I gotta give kudos to Cena for that. He did a great job. I enjoyed it. My second one will be Eddie Guerrero. Okay. Which one? The first one. Latino, he when he became a, uh huh. When he finally turned it into a face. Yeah. I enjoyed that one. Because yeah. That's he cool. finally got the attention that he needed. Yeah. And I think that helped him out to get where he get the second time he got becoming a face. But the first one, I think the first one was the one that really elevated his career. And and he got eyes from us, the fans. Like, Hell yeah, this is a Rasa representing Latino <laughs> heat, Latina heat right here. You know, like, like, like the whole Rasa. That, that's why I will have to go with that. that. That's how I feel about Eddie for sure. Uh, but Cena, yeah, another one too. Like I told you, like what I mentioned earlier, and it's interesting how that happened. You know, like no one ever expected that. So that's that's my list right there. So if you have your list, ladies and gentlemen, your your favorite, you know, best baby face turns, comment right below in the video. Give us yours. We would like to I hear your. Love. We're going to hear your feedback and give us yours. We would like to hear that. We would like to read it and see what's what's on your mind on that. Which one did you enjoy that the best turn said, oh, my God, it got you like, yes. You know, but now let's go to the wheel to see what's next for our next time. Top five. Let's see here. All right. Let's see. Um, and there we have it. So, the wheel of picks, ladies and gentlemen. New and improved. New and improved. Woo! Different colors. And then, of course, with the COD in the middle. So, let's spin that wheel. Come on. Best luchadors. Oh, oh. Wow. Yes. You, pre you got the power to see the future, Mike. The prediction. The prediction. Yes. <laughs> Wait a minute. We're still not done yet. We got to, we got one more to do. We're doing two now, ladies and gentlemen. So, so we can be ahead of time of what we're doing. So we're doing. We got luchadors. Now let's go with another one. Okay. Here we go. Two for two. Two Come for on. two. Best young lions. Best young lions. Best young lions. Oh. oh. <laughs> That's so good. close. Watch Stardom, watch Sendai Girls, watch Tokyo Joshi Pro. You guys got a lot of good ones. If you want best those women's matches, so I already have one in mind for sure. Oh yeah, me too. I have a lot in mind too. So I mean, hey, the best women matches could be from the past and the present actually. That we could get people remind everything. Luchadors, man, I'll have to go way back to the CML three triple A shit, man. Ivan, I'm gonna share two pieces of news right here, kind of impromptu. Two of them related to our top, our those two top fives that we just picked. My girlfriend informed me Mystico is leaving CMLL. Yes, he is. And then, of course, we've got Maki Ito versus Miyu Yamashita, October 9th coming up for the Princess of Princess Championship. All over, remember, we're a global, we're a global podcast. We talk about all yeah. the promotions. That is right. That's why you see the world right behind us. We, we run the world here, ladies and gentlemen. We are the world of podcasts. Who runs because, the world? Exactly. We run the world here. <laughs> Matt knows. Matt knows. Matt knows. Exactly. Because right here, Circle of the is educational here. It's very educational. A lot of education because he gives you the six to nine reasons of why to tune in Circle Debate, six to nine reasons why you should listen to it, and of course, six to nine reasons for you to subscribe to it. That's for sure. <laughs> for a fact, we will mix greens and everything else above all. But once again, thank you so much for tuning in here on Top, top Five, and you'll be hearing our Top Five pretty soon. There's a lot more. It's so many, man. It's so many. So. <laughs> 
Uh, you guys will love it so much. I love it here too. Do not forget, purchase your merchandise at our merchandise store, Circle of Debate <laughs> merchandise store on the link tree below. And make sure you get your own very own coffee mug, you get your own t-shirt, and tank top, muscle shirt, fanny pack, mask, and we got more exclusive ones coming out. So make sure you do, do not do not forget to purchase your merchandise. You're a debater. You're a follower of debaters right here. So I am gonna go ahead and let allow my other hermanos here to go ahead and close it out for this top five. So I will let Matt go first and then money and then hold on, let me correct myself here. He is because he is the unrivaled, the unmatched, the undefeated, the undisputed. And let's not forget undeniable. I mean, Mike Walker, that's right. And of course we have Swing. a six in Go ahead, go ahead. I just have to get, had to give a little wink to the people. <laughs> I think we already know. But yes, Mr. McAllis. All right, just letting you guys know, we don't make podcasts here. We make the sun don't shine forever, but as long as we're here, then we might as well shine together. Either now or never, business before pleasure, P. Diddy and the fan, who you know do it better. Yeah, right, no matter what we have tight. And when you're doing something, make sure you do it right. You'll make a nice out of yourself when you something, something. <laughs> <laughs> Close it out, Money Mike. Close it out. Take that, take that. When you're the greatest podcast in the world today, they don't call you a great podcast. They call you Circle of Debate. Oh, okay. <laughs>